I'm going to read an excerpt from a book. And sometime during this video, I'm going to share what the excerpt's from, but if you know what it is, good job. Before the deep as well as true emotion can be portrayed, the accidental must be stripped away. And when persons who have become sophisticated, over-refined, or corrupted to a false conception of men and life, when such persons are to be pre presented as feeling true emotion, they must first be brought back ruthlessly to their primitive human nature. This can be accomplished by only subjecting them to the humanizing influence of events that strike with primal, brutal primal directness at the roots of their pride, pretense, prejudice, ignorance, and self-complacency, and to be able thus to discriminate between the true and the false, between perverted and fundamental human character, the author must devoutly have preserved himself from false culture, false refinement, false pride, and false wisdom, which is sophistication and black ignorance. To see and to understand all things and all men, this must be his aim and achievement. I love that portion of the book. So guess what it is, and I'll tell you later on. So I am predominantly focusing on the INTP loop, and I have become a lot more intrigued by it because I guess it is a little bit more personal, and then just started to learn all the loops of each personality and giving insights into what each um, why each person loops or why uh, each MBTI person loops. But I was realizing like as I would communicate it to different people, like different types, um, the like abstract view is fine. So when you have the function stacks and you're trying to conceptualize like how um, this loop comes to be, how, how it comes to form for each person, but it's really good to be able to have what it's like for the individual and be on the ground roots with them um, because just the the overarching view isn't quite enough to give you the, the precision language. And so I would like to give the best I can for the INTP side um, and, and hopefully it is beneficial because so for the function stack, if we kind of look from the top end, um, we have introverted thinking, we have uh, extroverted intuition, introverted sensing, and then lastly, extroverted feeling. And I'm not going to get too much into each function stack. I'm just, so you might have to go researching for other videos that predominantly focus on like explaining what these are. But we have the first one, which is the dominant um, function, which is introverted thinking. And if I understanding and feel free to like throw in corrections in the comments, just to kind of keep me on track. And so it's kind of hard to communicate or try to explain the dominant function without the auxiliary function, which is the second one because one influences the other um, and in a way stimulates it. So for instance, extroverted intuition is um, the INTP's uh, auxiliary function. And as you're experiencing all this new, um, new possibilities, and, but they're, you're stimulated by different experiences, different people, different opportunities, and it will come into your introverted thinking um, sifts through it, it stimulates it. And so it, it, it sparks it to start thinking more and more. And, um, but because of the new influence of the intuition or just the external for so each type, the int um, introverted and the extroverted types of the function stack kind of like feed off of each other. And so for introverted thinking, it's stimulated by the extroverted, um, stimulus. And then because it's intuition, it's, um, a lot of the times the intuition is from the possibilities that are out there um, and you just get excited about it and you are able to um, start planning for the future. You can have ideas that kind of what somewhat is creative as well. Um, and then you have your third function, tertiary function. And for the INTP, it's the introverted sensing. And what that is, is the best I can understand it, you're internalizing experiences. Um, INFPs have the same uh, third function. And so when, when the loop happens, you are, it's, I, th I like to imagine it as there's a lot of pressure happening on the 
um, the experiences that you're having. Um, so you're overstimulated, so to speak, and you're shifting gears. You're, you're taking your secondary function and now you're shifting it to your third function. But now your third function is, is supporting your first function. Um, but they're both introverted. And so, and then for the, so for extroverted types, they will have both extroverted and it makes them go out more while with introverted types, it makes them go in more basically when those, when the, when the loop starts to happen. And so you start, uh, hyper analyzing all of your experiences. You're hyper analyzing events that happened to you, choices you've made and the implications that, uh, I guess more so the implications of those choices. And, um, you're trying to find new data within fixed experiences. Something had already happened. You're affected by them and nothing's new is coming in. And so you're just over analyzing something that is already quote unquote fixed within yourself. But it's, what's good is that you're, you are seeing if there's anything you've missed There's something about yourself that you're not, um, you're all, you're overlooking. Um, but then what ends up happening, um, the danger is if you don't get out of it, you are no longer, um, you're no longer giving yourself the opportunity to go be stimulated again, to go on a trip, to go hang out with friends, to go whatever, all these other things that used to give you a healthy dose of TI, which is the acronym for it, um, introverted thinking, um, you're now getting stuck within your own head. Um, and so what ends up happening kind of more on a ground level is that, um, the INTP is like beating himself up. Um, that he'll obsess over the events that had happened previously. And, um, a lot of the times he or she would want to be seen as like, they knew that something was wrong. They knew that something was up and they're really critically hurt by this event that happened and they start spinning over and over and over again. Um, and they're not allowing themselves to actually work through, um, uh, the struggle that they were having. Um, and they start to become very obsessive with the, uh, the events in their life. And what that ends up happening is that be, they become prone to like extreme bitterness and they're no longer, um, freeing themselves from the situation, um, because they're trying to, in a way, fix it, but it's in the past. And sometimes they, they guilt themselves over something that they should have done, especially if they knew that something was going to be a certain way and they still make a choice, um, that can really affect them, um, feeling like they are dumb, um, insignificant, um, and incompetent. And, um, as people go on perfectly fine, the INTP still wrestles in that space, um, trying to find justification and also trying to justify themselves in the experiences that they had. Um, which is a really tough spot to be. And you'll find them basically becoming like a broken record. And so that's why for myself, like the past, to be honest, I think five or six years I've been stuck in a loop, um, of various degrees kind of coming in and out different events in my life. I would, anytime I, I would always find a way to bring it up in some capacity. It's almost like when you're around the dinner table and you're one, there's someone in the dinner table that's prone to always talking about politics and tries to get the conversation to politics or make sure you don't talk about politics cause they'll go on and on and it gets really ugly. It's kind of almost like that. Um, because you're, you're trying to process it. Um, but that's not necessarily a space, um, that needs TI, but what it's really good for is when you can, cause you're going to hyper analyze every event and make sure that you didn't miss something about what someone else did or what you might've done, um, and overlooked why something came to be. But if you're never satisfied, sometimes you're not satisfied by what you come up with or, you still feel this hurt and pain. And so this is where I think, um, INTPs feel really stuck because they don't always know how to 
create an outlet. There's a place for, yes, you, you need to jump onto your NE or extroverted intuition and start um, experiencing new things again. Um, so that would be kind of the bird's eye view is that you need to have new experiences. While that is true, there's a place for that. Um, you also need to find a way to actually process those emotions because if you just make yourself distracted, you're not addressing the core of the problem, which is that um, you're hurt, you're disappointed, you're frustrated, um, you're afraid, you're, you feel isolated. And so it's really important for INTPs to be able to jot down what they felt. What are the words they're saying? Because they might say like, oh, and this person, they did this and I knew they were going to do this. And I'm really just, um, I can't believe that they did this. But it's like none of the words are coming out are necessarily like, I feel really betrayed that this happened. I feel um, like I had my hopes up for something, but then it completely went the backwards and I'm really disappointed. Um, or I'm like, I'm really angry at these people for believing this certain thing and I feel trapped and it's like needing to actually articulate how you feel about a thing so I would almost guess that that would be in the extroverted feeling space which is INTP's pretty much worst um, cognitive function um, or at least most difficult to access um, and so I would suggest like what I would do is like journal out things I mean, nothing just changes over time because it depends how deeply wedged and how intricate because sometimes it's not just one event. It's it's this mass of events that kind of happened all at once. And there might be certain key things that are just stinging at the same time, especially if there are things in the present that constantly remind you of those times in the past and you can't get out of it. All you see when you see someone or see a thing, it just brings you right back. And you might have predisposed like prejudices in a way targeting those people that are in your present that actually are not correlated at all to the past but you make them the past experiences that you had so um, in while having new experiences jotting down things like how you feel and why you feel that way and and then also redefining the present um, like where are you at what are what is good um and then being able to also like reword the past, because especially that's in bitterness, you're going to always kind of make it your fault, you, like you knew, and these people are terrible and ugly, and it only gets worse and worse uh, the more you um, go back to those places and defining it that way. So like <laughs> trying to say that these were good learning experiences, or whenever you find yourself talking about certain people again, um, to bring them up in a gentle way and not harsh. Um, and so those are just some things that I, I've found that are really important and valuable to like get yourself out of the loop, but it is a process because it's not going to come after just, you know, some experiences and jotting down some things, especially if, if the, your issue is rather intricate. I'm running out of time, but the book that I read from is called Short Stories in the Making by... Uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Robert Wilson Neal. I would suggest reading it. It's an awesome book. It's more than just story. It's also a whole like philosophy. This was honestly such a funny find. Um, it was like, I'll have to share this story sometime. But let me know. Let me know how you guys are feeling and if this was valuable to you in the comment sections below. And I'll see you in another video or another life. You never know.